Come on in. We should have gotten off there. Oops. Opa, isto aqui é uma rua, pá. Uh, Scott's having some issues. Really important that he's pain free. Are going through withdrawals. It's so inexpensive compared to the States. What's the saying? If you see something, say something. Use a sketch ATM. We made it to Lisbon. I got through what I thought was going to be the hardest part customs. He asked zero questions, looked at nothing. <laughs> Just looked at our passports for two seconds, stamp, we're good to go. Scott's over trying to get some, some euros out. Yay, money! So we made the mistake of uh, not getting our eSIMs purchased or activated while we were still in the United States. Oops! We realized that once we were like on the plane. <laughs> then I thought we'd get to the airport and get some free Wi-Fi, but uh, all the, all the Wi-Fi accounts looks very suspicious. There's nothing like official from the airport that's coming up, so we're gonna wait. <laughs> we'll figure this out. So we think we took the wrong, well, not the wrong train, but the train to the wrong station. Did we? Uh, it was the one really close to the airport. Not the one 11 stops away like we took. <laughs> I think we're on the right train. In the right direction. I mean, it's still in the wrong area, but yeah. Yeah, we're knocking it out. We'll figure this out. I knew when we jumped on this train, it was wrong, or the, the first train. Eight stops. So we went eight stops too far. <laughs> we should have only gone like two or three. <laughs> Why did you allow that? Well, I didn't know until it was too late. And then I looked up at the map, and I saw the name. I was like, that name looks really familiar. Like that's what I thought we needed. <laughs> What's the saying? If you see something, say something. <laughs> I should have said something. <laughs> Started there. We went all the way here. Longer. We should have gotten off there. <laughs> <laughs> so we finally got to the right train station and then we found the train, but of course we need tickets. And there was a ticket counter and it's completely closed. Ooh, we found it. <laughs> Not even sure if we said. Um, we're trying to get to Porto, uh, Portugal's second largest city. We're in Lisbon right now. That's where we flew into. There are flights directly to Porto, but um, we would have had to transfer planes. And would have been a bigger ordeal. Okay, we found the right train to Porto. The metro ticket that we took to get here uh, was about 13 euro. The tickets to get to uh, Porto from Lisbon are 25, 25, 25 euro each. The metro ticket does not have to cost you that. I bought a 24 hour pass. Oh, you just did? Just because I didn't know how many trains we'd be taking. Oh, well we took two. Yeah. <laughs> how much would it have been, you know? Um, probably like three couple, or four couple euro. euro. Okay, so we have spent extra money there. <laughs> Live and learn, right? Something else we discovered is uh, they have a lot of cobbled sidewalks here, even at the train stations. and. They're definitely not made for these suitcases to roll smoothly on. Just to back his car up. Yes. 
got a key even book a bag. Yeah, is it just down here? It, where, yeah. How far? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, we have arrived. Finally. It's our first full day in Porto and I won't show you our the rest of the room because it's so tiny we exploded. <laughs> There's literally nowhere for anything. Um, this is our view of the city. Very pretty. Lots of old, old, old buildings. Terracotta, I believe it's called rooftops. Tons of cranes. Cute little sitting area, a tiny little bal balcony. Think beautiful. These streets are amazing. coffee we're trying to get to is way over there by that I guess that's the cathedral um, but we can't get there because of all this construction so we have to find our way around in this crazy city doing construction improvements so we found our coffee we actually um, found a Starbucks because we haven't had coffee in like a day and a half <laughs> Are going through withdrawals. Yeah, our kids are like numb, and um, all the local coffee, of course, is like thimble size, and it'll knock you off your ass, on your ass. <laughs> I'm not ready for that quite yet. I just need like some familiar coffee. So here we are. So with the crazy travel day we had yesterday and the day before, uh, we slept until after 11 a.m. today. I never ever do that. Neither was he. Between the jet lag and all the walking we've done so far. It's crazy. Our bodies are just way off. We were up at 3.30 in the morning. Wide awake. Yeah. And then come back asleep. And it's like 11 a.m. It's probably going to go on for a few days, I, I, I would imagine. Caffeine's going to help us during the day, though, that's for sure. So one of the very first things we're doing here in Porto on our first full day here is uh, going to a dentist office. Uh, Scott's having some issues and he wants to get that taken care of. Really important that he's pain free um, so we can enjoy all of our travels going forward. So while he's doing that, I'm gonna go explore the neighborhood here. There's a plant based shop of some kind, groceries and things. And I'm gonna go check it out because we have yet to find any type of grocery store other than these little tiny, tiny markets that don't have a lot of options. major fail. <laughs> I went to two different locations, mapped them. They were both within walking distance and got to the addresses and they were not plant-based shops at all. One of them was a ladies clothing store, the other one a shoe store. Like a, I think it was called Sportico. It's like a foot locker in the United States. So not at all what I was looking for. <laughs> and then the other fail of the day is I didn't, I didn't drop a pen or note the name of the dentist where I left Scott for his appointment and I would have no way to figure out where it was so I'm retracing my steps. I even checked uh, Google Maps history for today and it's not showing that I was over there even though I was sitting in the office for 10 to 15 minutes with Scott. So I can't really rely on that totally. And there he is then, waiting for me on the street corner. <laughs> yeah. All right picked up Scott from the dentist. We're gonna go find something to eat for me because unfortunately he can't eat right now. We're gonna go back to the place we went last night. It's a uh, plant-based buffet and it was really good. We didn't record anything there because we were just dead tired. So we're gonna go back today for lunch.
I'm gonna have lunch. He's gonna watch me eat <laughs> first now. So we're at Tatera, which is a plant-based uh, restaurant. Last night we came here and they had a big, gi giant, giant buffet of maybe 15 different entree type items. And uh, it was all you can eat. I had three platefuls. So did Scott. They have a lunch buffet and a dinner buffet. Um, well, in between, they, they have an actual menu. So I ordered a, uh, it's called a green burger made out of peas, avocado, and mayonnaise. Scott's just gonna have a smoothie because his mouth is not feeling great at the moment. So that amazing meal, which included my burger and Scott's two smoothies, was a total of 17.50 euro. What a bargain. This is another day. We are now attempting to go to a full-fledged grocery store. First, we're gonna to try to find a real bank so we don't use a sketch ATM to withdraw some cash. The bank ATM that we went to was completely closed or out of service, so we found a less sketchy looking one on the street. So far, we've only been able to uh, find little tiny market, like neighborhood markets just to pick up some like bare essentials. But now we're looking for like a real store to buy some real groceries. So on our way to the grocery store on our route, we saw a place called Vigana, which I believe means vegan. Scott is having some sort of special burger. I think it's seitan based. I'm having a quinoa burger. Twenty Nespresso pods for 365 euro. Wow. So we just found this vegan lasagna. We think we have to bake it in an oven. We don't have an oven, but we're gonna try it in the microwave, take off the foil. Two ninety nine. Hello, you beautiful people. Come on in. Welcome to beautiful Portugal. This is the city of Porto. This is our Airbnb kitchen. And as you can see, we have a cooktop, sink, the microwave, coffee machine, which I am personally addicted to. Um, all of the equipment needed for cooking is in here, which is fantastic. We have a very um, adequate European fridge with our delicious goodness in there. Freezer that needs to be defrosted. We also have our lovely bed, which is actually really comfortable. As you can see, there is a theme to this room. There is um, the piece of art on the wall. This gentleman, um, Aristide de Souza Mendez, with his two children, helped thousands of Jews flee from um, Germany to Portugal during World War II. He was um, the Council of or Consul of Portugal in Bordeaux. Wait, you didn't memorize all this? No. <laughs> they provided, thankfully, our Airbnb hosts. He was actually recognized by Israel for saving thousands of lives, first in 1966, I believe. And in 1986, the US recognized him um, as saving these lives. And then Portugal recognized it and then elevated him to the level of ambassadorship. As you can see, we have a tiny uh, wardrobe space over here, which houses underneath some of our laundry, dirty laundry, um, jackets and coats. Our bathroom is right here. 
which has a shower and all the facilities. The sink. This. This. <laughs> <laughs> this thing. Um, so it's been, it's been actually pretty good. We also have this gorgeous balcony, which we are often on for meals when it's not windy. And we have a gorgeous view of Porto. So that's really it. That's the whole space. And we've been here for a, a bed, while. which is also a sofa. Well, it's not a sofa, but it yeah. acts as a sofa. This acts as our sofa. And the dining area at times. Our dining room when it's windy outside or cold. It's because of my office space over there. Um, we are grateful that we have air conditioning. It also is a heater, but it kind of wonky. Up the room, <laughs> makes yeah. it really steamy, almost yeah. like a sauna. Yeah. So we don't use that. We don't use that. Thankfully, portion. it's been pretty warm. It, it is June. Yeah, we just put on layers if we get cold. So we're kind of near the ocean, so it, you know, it does get cool, especially when the wind kicks up. Yeah. What else do you want to see? That's it. I think okay. we covered the entire place. Okay. All 150 square feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. think something like that. Yeah. This, this is, is super tiny. This is a little more than we were working with in our RV. But yeah. Barely. Know, we're, thankfully, we had five years of living in small space. Yeah that we were able to navigate each other through this. So we did have to put our slide our two of our suitcases under the bed on all of our shoes. We won't show that it's kind of messy. Yeah, it is a mess. Oh yeah, this is our charging station over here because this was really nowhere else. So we yeah. have cameras and audio stuff and batteries. Yeah. But super grateful for the space. It's a beautiful remodel, you know, in a very old part of, of Porto. just noticing how all of the cafes and restaurants that they just are like packed full of people at all hours like this it's like there's no off hours during the day for these restaurants everywhere we turn there's just people dining and drinking every day not just the weekend either and it's not just the touristy areas that are like that it's like all over the city that we've been to at least and we have not just been in the touristy areas I think we found our grocery store, the one we've been looking for. They have these little tiny packages, perfect for travelers. And so inexpensive compared to the States. Like a lot of stuff is like a quarter of the price. These are like a packet of three bars, the like kind bars for 159 euro. That's so inexpensive. One kind bar in the States costs that or more. That was a great experience. We found our grocery store. <laughs> we were going to walk right past this place and we just looked up and we're like, that looks like a big ass grocery store. Let's do it. Yeah. Didn't come up in our searches. So we got all those groceries. It was, uh, I believe about 44 Euro, which is about, I don't know, $48 US dollars. Uh, in the States, that stuff would have easily cost 100 or 150 Euro dollars.
You just bit into it. How is it? It's really good. Awesome. Yeah. Made in Portugal. Mmm. Just to give an idea of some of the pricing of the food here. Here I'm looking at the receipt. What stands out the most to me is the price of bread. Um, baguette, 0.92 euro, which is about a dollar. It's all in Portuguese. It's all in Portuguese. <laughs> I can't make sense of this receipt. But I know those, um, the big, the big giant bread thing we got, like two euro. States that would have cost seven dollars easily. Easy. Yeah. These are like artisan breads, not like regular loaves of bread because we were paying we we used to buy Dave's and that was like seven or eight dollars for a loaf. And yeah. it was it was okay. It's like American style bread. Yeah. And these are nice artisan breads for under under three dollars. Like the most expensive loaf. loaf of bread that I saw that looked like it was really good quality, I think it was two point seven five euros. And that's yeah. for good quality. Uh, that same quality in the States would have been ten dollars for a loaf. Yeah. Some of the fruit I saw was similar, but a lot of it was cheap. Like the bananas we bought, I think were roughly the same as what we would have paid in the States. Uh, but just overall, just just way less expensive here for food, to purchase food and to eat out as well. We keep going to a place called Deterra. It's a vegetarian buffet. We thought it was a marching band. <laughs> kind of was. Five dudes, you said? Five, yeah, five guys. With drums. We ran out to catch them. We just saw the tail end of it. Yeah. He's trying to fly. <laughs> <laughs> 